Welcome back to Real Estate Happenings, your go-to podcast for all things real estate. This week, I'm excited to have Carrie Cole there. And Carrie is the founder of Curate Capital, a venture capital fund by women for women. I absolutely love that. And you're colorful online presence. She mm-hmm. said she couldn't find orange today though. I'll like, do better yeah. next time. I have every other color of the rainbow, but I was lacking in orange. I discovered well, this you look morning. Gorgeous. Thank you. But thank you for being here. My There's honor. so many things that we need to talk about that I'm trying to figure out. Tell us a little bit about you. Sure. From your start. Goodness. Um, where to start? Uh, I'll start kind of at the beginning. Uh, yes. I grew up in a very small town in the Texas Panhandle. I was the first in my family to go to college. And so all of my early decisions uh, were very practical and pragmatic in nature. You know, what to study? Well, I just, wherever I got the best scholarships, and that happened to be engineering. And then, well, what career am I going to pursue? Well, I happened to get the best job offers in the oil and gas industry. So that brought me to Houston over 20 years ago. And so Houston is home now. But yeah, so professionally speaking, I had a career in oil and gas for almost 20 years. Uh, Majority of that time was spent at Hillcorp, which is a privately held company that most people haven't heard of, but it's actually the largest privately held oil and gas company in the U.S. now. But I was there during a time of great growth and uh, got to learn so much from the founder. He ran the company in such an entrepreneurial way that really inspired me. Now, truth of the matter is that I was never passionate about oil and gas, even though you know, I had a great career, right. but um, having um, ownership, which was one aspect of, you know, his entrepreneurial um, nature, all the employees had some piece of equity, having that allowed me to kind of step away about seven or so years ago and figure out what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. And when I left, I really had no set plans in mind. I just knew that I wanted it to be something that I personally was more passionate about and something that was very entrepreneurial in nature. So then I started kind of investing my own money into female founded brands and really three important things happened. I was having great fun and I wouldn't have used the word fun to describe my career in the past. So fun is good. Great, um, great results. I saw um, the great returns, you know, by just investing some capital, those companies were able to scale really efficiently. But then third and most importantly, I had great deal flow. So I saw the great opportunity set and I knew that it was more than I could handle just myself. So at that point, I um, somewhat naively said, let's do a venture capital fund so we can do more of this. And so really, we launched in 2021 uh, and closed our first fund last summer, had a target of $10 million. We actually raised 15 and we've invested in about 15 businesses so far. Um, Things are going great and we're looking to launch our second fund this year. And so we invest in female founders, specifically consumer brands that women start. Our belief is that women know what other women want, uh, whether it's for them personally or their families or whatever, they control the majority of the purchasing decisions in households. And generally speaking, women are so underfunded yet over delivering results. And so we just think it makes good business sense to invest in those sorts of businesses. I absolutely love that. I mean, the whole from A to Z is just so encouraging for me. And what do you remember what that day was like when you decided, okay, I'm going to do this? It was scary. Okay. Uh, and, and I think, you know, it, gosh, I, I probably didn't even realize how scary it was going to be, right? Walking away from a you know, lucrative career, right? Paychecks, um, not just paychecks, but we also got our monthly cash flow from the oil and gas properties that we were invested in. So the, the ownership aspect of it. So bonuses and all these really cool programs. We actually had um, some pretty creative incentives, like uh, one year, one uh, five year term, we had this plan to double the size of the company. And if we doubled the size of the company, then everyone in the company got a new car. Oh, and wow. Yeah. Don't get any ideas. Okay. <laughs> Don't get any ideas. We had some really creative incentives and I saw how powerful it was to really align incentives within an organization and get everyone on the same page and moving towards the same goals. It was really inspiring uh, to be there. Definitely. And all this while raising your two little ones. Well, so I didn't have my children until I left the corporate world, which worked out great. Uh, I didn't have children until I was in my 40s and they were both surprises. Um, So, you know, I have a a, just a strong feeling at this point that life works out the way it's supposed to. That's right. I didn't necessarily think children were in the the cards for me, um, just kind of the way life had played out. And when I was working, I in corporate world, I was working a lot of hours, you know, I would have been away from them and away from home a lot, traveling. Um, so it just kind of all works out how it's meant to be. I certainly work more probably now than ever, yes. 
but at least it's on my own terms and it's flexible enough so I can do school pickup or school drop off and then get back to work or whatever. So it's a good, good life. I'm happy with how things stand right now. Isn't that just, to me, it's always surprising the things that as women that we do, I mean, balancing running a business to dropping off to, we have a project that's due. Well, I'm trying to negotiate a million dollar deal in the pantry. Yes. Just, I love <laughs> talking about that because I feel like we don't talk about that enough. It's a lot. And, you know, I think that's one thing that makes women so good in business is that we are used to juggling so many things and balancing a lot of priorities and pursuing multiple things at the same time. And, you know, we were talking before we hit record on this and I just am so in awe of, you know, you're always on call. You always have to answer the call from clients and all this. And I'm at least able to shut it off a little bit more um, in the evening. You know, I, I don't necessarily have to be on call 24 seven, but it's really impressive and inspiring what what you all in the real estate world uh, do you. for your clients yeah thank you it definitely it takes a village it does take a village yeah. you know to do the things that we do but with what you're doing I just love hearing I didn't realize that that you so you had your babies as you're starting this new business so you were changing diapers Yes. While trying to start this fund, while trying to find the businesses to invest in. Yes. And, and still changing diapers and with still one. still changing diapers. <laughs> I have a five-year-old, almost six, and a two-year-old. And he was my uh, COVID surprise baby. He was actually born on New Year's Eve of 2020. So like the best possible end to the strangest year, right? But um, yeah, certainly uh, life is funny with its twists and turns, but they're they're the biggest blessings that I, I never knew I needed. Uh, right. So, And I just love sharing about being a working mom. I feel like not enough moms talk about that. So it's so important for those that are thinking, can I make this career change yeah. while, you know, having little ones or just being a mom period or start this new business or, you know, it's like you always kind of think about it. So I've always loved sharing my personal experiences and hearing from other working moms, because I feel like for anyone who's watching, I mean, if we can motivate someone, you know, go for it. Yeah, absolutely. And that's not to say that you have to have children to have a full and fulfilling life. Right. But goodness, they certainly have motivated me to do my best. And, and, and they keep be us the on best. our toes. Yeah, exactly. Oh, they're challenging us every day. That's for sure. So with Curate Capital, you got it, you got it going, got yeah. it started. Um, how big is your team now? Uh, well, this is one of the challenges of traditional venture fund economics. Okay, so to break down some numbers, the way that traditionally venture funds work is that Everybody get your pen and paper. Yeah. Out. Okay. This is going to be important. I got to say, when I said I was naive in starting this, I don't think I appreciated uh, really the way the economics work and um, and going forward will challenge some of this conventional wisdom because the traditional economics just don't work for, for a small-ish size fund. It's fine if you're a billion dollar fund, but the way it works is that I basically get 2% management fees to not only pay myself, but run the fund. So I raised $15 million. 2% of that is about 300000 annually which may sound like an, a lot, but that's to support my family and pay the bills and hire any you know help. So as you can see that I've had to get very creative with this first fund about how I lean on outside resources, you know, contract help and so on and so forth. As we add additional funds and as we scale, that will have to give um, and we'll, we'll have more fees to work with, but also I've got some other ideas. So, so we'll be building out our team, you know, within the next 12 or so months, but it's been a humbling and, and challenging season of having to, to do a lot with a little. No, definitely. Carrie, if, um, and for anybody that's watching, if they have, I'm a female, I have $50,000 saved or say a hundred thousand dollars saved and I come to you and what is the first step? if I want to invest and yeah. what does that look like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great question. So first things first in this company to invest in private investments like this, you know, not the stock market, but like privately held companies, you have to be an accredited investor. Okay. So most people think, oh, that sounds like something I have to apply for or something that I, you know, have to achieve. All that means, that's an SEC definition that says that you make more than $200,000 a year as an individual or $300,000 as a household, or you have a net worth greater than $1 million. And I b believe it's excluding your primary residence. Look up the details on that. You can Google it. But a lot of people are accredited investors and don't even realize it. So then the next step is 
just learning about the asset class. And thankfully, we live in a time where we can learn a lot online. Uh, I learn about real estate through you and others, and, and that's something that I want to get more into. Um, in terms of venture capital, um, most funds will have a minimum investment that's pretty high. Mm -hmm. It might be 250000 or 500000 But with Curate Capital, it was really important to me to not only break down barriers to understanding, but break down barriers to access. And so I made the minimum as low as practically possible. Mm -hmm. so that as many women as possible could invest and start learning. Mm -hmm. So um, with as low as, say, twenty five or 50000 I had some investors come in. And so all you have to do is be accredited. You can go to our website, click on invest, and fill out a form to, to um, let your interest be known. And the way that funds, again, traditionally work is that they're closed funds. So we closed our first fund. So you uh, kind of missed the boat on that one, but we'll be opening up fund two the next time. And so what that means is when you invest in a fund, then you're going to get a diversified portfolio. You know, we've invested in 15 funds, uh, 15 companies in this funds so far, and wow. we'll probably do more. So what's good about that is that all your eggs aren't in one basket, right? Mm -hmm. You've spread your risk out. And so, you know, some may be grand slams, some may be home runs, some may be more of a struggle, but you're getting more at bat, so to speak, to use a sports analogy. So I think that's important in any investment um, scenario, whether it's real estate or venture capital or the stock market or whatever, you know, you don't want to be too heavily into just one thing. So that's the kind of, um, advantages of a fund. And beyond that, you can trust that uh, my team, I do have a few people, <laughs> I have a key person who helps me run due diligence and, and handle deal flow. You can trust that we've done the behind the scenes work to vet these investments and make sure they're kind of the best of the best, so to speak, so that we are minimizing your risk and maximizing returns. I love that. And what about for female owned businesses mm -hmm. that are also watching this and say, oh my God, Carrie, Nancy, I want to learn how I can be one of those businesses that you invest in. What does that look like for them? Yeah. So with venture capital, I'll say this, I, it's not for every business, right? So when you take on venture capital, you're basically entering into a sometimes unspoken agreement that you're on track to scale your company, to grow it, and then ultimately sell it. Because we as venture capitalists don't make money until you sell your business. We're not taking dividends out along the way. We're not getting a, a cut of you know, your cash flow. We're just letting you reinvest all that money, you know, take our capital, use it to grow the business, and then you're reinvesting all those profits and getting your business to be bigger, faster, better, all those things, so that ultimately someone else will buy the business. And do you help with that as well, Carrie? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're helping on the operations side with our portfolio, as well as when it comes time, you know, maybe helping on the the M and A side, the merger and acquisition side, getting buyers, you know, getting the valuation where it needs to be, all those sorts of things. So yeah, there's there's value add all along the way. And different venture capital funds, by the way, have different value adds that they'll tout. And some of it is just kind of hot air. Some of it's actually very practical. So back to your point about what to look for. Uh, if you've got a business, do your research on different funds. It's kind of hard to do sometimes because they're not always super transparent, but every fund will have a very specific thesis. So maybe they invest at the seed stage and maybe they invest, you know, $500,000 checks, and maybe they invest in this industry or that. So rather than just blasting your info everywhere, do some research and find the ones that might be the best fit for you. That's amazing. That's a lot of information. <laughs> so if I am looking for capital, then, and don't start rumors, guys, I'm not looking for capital, <laughs> but let's say I have a jewel rate line, right? And I come to you and there's a process that goes into it. But as a business owner, you have to remember that the end goal is to sell because right. that's when those investors get paid. What does that timeline look like? Are we looking at six months, five years for someone who's never even thought about selling their business? Yeah. So, you know, some venture capitalists will say five to seven years, you know, even as short as three to five years. Um, we actually anticipate having a few exits within the next 12 to 18 months, which is really wow. early. I mean, just as kind of a unique situation where that's happened. But yeah, I mean, we're wanting to, to get that return fairly quickly. And when we talk about a return, we're actually hoping for a multiple on our capital. So not just a percentage, but like a 3x or a 5x or something, ideally, you know, with, commiserate with the, the risk and the timeline that we've taken. That's so interesting to me. Okay, yeah. wonderful. And I'll definitely make sure that we share Carrie's information. For any ladies that are looking to invest, I know I certainly get that question 
all the time in real estate. Nancy, I have a hundred thousand. What do I do? Yeah. And there's just so many more steps than just telling someone buy this and you're going to make some money. Exactly. Yeah. Another way that you can dip your toe in the water, so to speak, is from time to time, we'll run what's called these SPVs, these special purpose vehicles, where as long as you're accredited, that's a requirement we can't really work around. You can invest for as little as say, five or $10,000. Now that does just go to one of our companies. So say one of our companies, we've already invested, they're doing well, they're growing, they're gonna raise some more capital. We might want to support them by doing these SPVs. Like right now we're running one for, um, it's a company called Intuitap. It's an amazing medical device company that's almost at the finish line. Uh, they're waiting on FDA approval, but basically long story short, they've created the stud finder for the spine to make getting an epidural easier. So that's a pain point, literally. We all almost want that. All but yes, it's how really, do I invest in that? Sign me up. It's, it's closed. No, it's open right now. Okay, yeah. sign me up. <laughs> We're closing Anything in the next week or with so. Having children, Jesus, make it easier. It's amazing. The founder um, is an engineer by education. She actually won the Forbes 30 Under 30 award wow. in 2017 for this. So she's been at this a while. They're based here in Houston, actually. She's a rock star. You know, the FDA is behind post COVID, so they're just taking a long time. Um, but all signs are positive and we expect a, a good outcome in that very shortly. Congratulations. So, yeah, she's just one of those people you're just proud to be associated with. You know, she's doing such innovative things. And I think it's such a great example that innovation doesn't have to be like rocket science or this new like AI focus or all these really hard, complicated things. Right. It's just solving a problem that hadn't been solved for. Right. Like, we still in this day and age think it's okay that anesthesiologists just kind of feel along our spine mm -hmm. to figure out where to do the epidural. But she said, there's got to be a better way. And it's, it's a simple imaging device. And, you know, it, it cuts the prick, so to speak, down from like three to one. Right. So, no, yeah. I remember before getting my epidural, they had me sign all of these forms. And I remember someone saying to me, and I'm on my phone trying to work it. <laughs> of course by the you ways, are. I'm trying to have a baby. And they said, ma'am, you have to get off your phone because you're getting your epidural. And <laughs> if we we could poke the wrong place, you could be paralyzed. And I was like, hold on one second. <laughs> you just said I could be paralyzed? Say so, what? Yeah, what is that? You know, are you sure you're talking to me? So the fact that that someone's actually working on that is just phenomenal. It's pretty amazing. That. It is yeah. incredible. Yeah. yeah, getting an epidural was the, almost the worst part of giving birth. I, I always say that. I do too. So while, you know, running Curate Capital and working with all of these business owners and investors, Mommy life. Let's talk about mommy life. Yeah. What are, we have so many working moms that watch the podcast. If you could give them tips, two tips on how to help them not lose their mind, what would those be, Carrie? Oh, goodness. I feel like I can learn from you. You're further along in this journey than I am. So with a five and two year old, I don't know that I'm an expert at this yet. But, you know, I think for me, as much as possible when I'm with them, I try to be present with them. Yes. On the, the other side, though, I think it's important that they know and appreciate what mommy does. Um, I actually just posted a reel yesterday on the, the Curate account. My daughter has a very simple explanation for what mommy's job is. She says, mommy's company gives other companies money so they can grow bigger, faster. And that's kind of a nice synopsis yes. of what venture capital is. So That's perfect. I love it. There's something to be said for the simplicity of, of young minds. But yeah, you know, for me, and I know not everyone can draw hard boundaries, but when I'm with them, I try to be really with them. I mean, notifications are off on my phone, do not disturb, you know, all that sort of thing. And I know, like we talked about with you, not always practically possible, but, you know, just be where you are. So if you're working, be totally focused on that. If you're momming, be totally focused on that. And one thing that's amazed me is how much they really watch and pick up on everything we do. You they know, do. so if we're distracted and staring at our phone or if we're engaged with them or if they see us working, I mean, they, they emulate the good and the bad. They so, do. yeah, you just have to be aware of that. Something I've learned to do because you know, I can't ever be off, which I'm okay with. I love in real estate. I breathe it, live it every single day from the minute I wake up is I will forward my phone. Yeah. So I have an amazing executive assistant, Chloe, who like helps me run my life. And that's why I always say it takes a team. Yes. So for me to be able to forward my phone and still 
be able to let my clients know that I'm not available at the moment, but someone is there to take care of them and that I can be present with them is so important. That's great. And they appreciate that. Like you said, they really, and even when my phone's not ringing, my kids are older, they're 11 and 12. So they'll say, mom, why is your phone not ringing? Are you not busy? You know, they pick up on things. They pick up on everything actually. Yeah. You have such a great infrastructure here, such a great support system and such a great team. That's a testament to your leadership. I couldn't do it any other way. I mean, I would probably not be where I am or lose my mind, one of the two, right? You know, without them. So right. kudos to the team. With, you know, online presence, social media, everyone is on social media nowadays. Your, by the way, if you guys don't follow Carrie, please do. Her Instagram handle is just so colorful and oh, vibrant. Thanks. I love it. Thanks. How do you, where did that come from? It's so, so fun. Yeah. So I've just always liked color. And so that was kind of what my brand was built upon. But I started my Instagram, true story. Um, the first week Instagram launched, I was on Instagram. That's why I have such a short handle. It's just like at Carrie C. And the okay. the context there is that I had actually gone through a divorce that year earlier. Okay. And at the time, um, remember everyone was on Facebook. Yes. And I just got completely off Facebook because it was just too painful, you know, mm -hmm. former family members and friends and blah, 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 all that. So I just gone completely off social media. Um, and then this new photo sharing app came out. And I like taking photos. I like pretty things. You take beautiful photos. <laughs> yeah. And so I was like, oh, let me check this out. So I was on it the first week at launch. And then in the meantime, kind of as I was winding down my oil and gas days, I was on the side just for fun, started a blog. And, and so was on Instagram in the early days when it was easy to grow. And whether this was at the tail end of my oil and gas career or after I left, I'm not sure, but I was just doing a lot of fun things, you know, single, no kids. I was traveling Good the world, you. going to fashion shows. And so I was just posting lots of pretty pictures. And in the easy days, of, early days of Instagram, it was easy to grow. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so I certainly don't have the biggest following by any means, but my followers have been like longtime loyal followers. And so why that's important now, you know, I don't really blog and I don't, you know, do like paid posts. I don't do like the influencer thing like I used to, but it's important to note that that has been so pivotal and important to building Curate Capital. And what I mean by that on one hand, that's how I found all the brands that we've invested in. Either they found me or I found them via Instagram. Or on the other hand, even more surprising to me, most of my investors came through Instagram. Wow. And the SEC has certain rules like where you can't really like do the salesy thing for mm -hmm. venture capital, mm -hmm. right? But just talking about what we were doing and the companies we were investing in, just doing that very naturally solicited a lot of interest from women. So I had women who I'd never met who were writing 25000 250000 or even in one case, over a million dollar check. All from Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I've got the done the numbers. I think over 60% of the capital we raised came from Instagram followers. Hey. Like, I don't even care about growing these days. And it's hard to it's grow. quality over quantity. But if you... Yes. Now I would say you're way better at being consistent these days. I'm trying to get back in the swing of things, but you know, like when I was in the building mode, like building Curate Capital, that really like zapped all my energy. Like all of that was going into the logistical and strategic, you know, parts of that versus like creating content. I'm finally kind of coming out of that season, I feel like, and trying to, to be a bit more consistent with some content, but you're such a good example of that for me. Thank yeah. you. We're trying, selling oh, real estate, posting it. pictures and videos. It's all part of what we do. It's so fun to watch. Lastly, you are such a fashion icon. Oh gosh. What are some of your You're tips too for spring and summer fashion? <laughs> what are you seeing? Because I need to stop wearing black and white. Oh, girl, I am in my, my mom mode era. I feel like my fashion is sorely lacking these days. And also, uh, just if we're going to be transparent here, I've also been in a mode of not spending as much. You know, we're investing everything we have into our business. And so you get a, a bit more creative with things. So I will still splurge on the accessory here and there. And so I would say go with a pop of color with your accessories this spring. I love that. Yeah, freshen things up a tip. bit. Yeah. And you can't go wrong with Target, by the way. That's oh, this is true. Place to go. This is true. And I know I've, I, have I admitted that before? I love Target. Seriously, I will do some serious damage. A little Target. Target, a little J. Crew, a little outlet mall shopping. Yes. I'll tell a real fast, funny story. Please. This dress I have on. Last fall, we went up to Dallas for some 
family stuff. And my husband unpacked everything at the hotel. I said, okay, there's one more bag. You got to go, no, this is everything. He had forgot to load my bag into the car. And so I was up in Dallas for the weekend with literally nothing. So I went to the outlet mall and got this dress for like $35. And then I had to go to like Walmart to get toiletries and stuff. So anyway, wow. yeah. So I'm all about a good deal, but then I, I, I splurge on the accessories, I guess. Yes, yeah. I love so, it. Well, you look anyway. amazing. Thank yeah. you so much for being here. Oh, gosh, thanks today. for having me. It's so inspiring to witness what you've built and all that you're achieving, and I'm just happy to know you and honor. Well, it's all about empowering women. Speaking of empowering women, we're so excited to announce that Carrie's one of the speakers, which thank yes. you so much for doing that. Um, oh. I feel like that is probably one of the biggest reasons we have a podcast, social media. It's about just really empowering women and have them see and show them. And I think you and I talked about this before. So many intelligent women out there, but and, you know, I'm guilty of this myself. We doubt ourselves. Yes. And so having these conversations, I feel like for the working mom, or even if you're not a mom, just, you know, single female thinking about starting something, just letting them know that they can do it. Just try it. Just jump in. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so excited to be a part of your event. I would say yes to anything that you do because I know Thank it's you. going to be top notch. But yeah, absolutely. I think there's just so much to be said for breaking down barriers to understanding uh, things, whether it's investing, whether it's business, all these things, let's just talk about them openly. Because once we understand the game we're playing, we can play it better, right? We can decide right. whether to play the game. And then if we want to play, play it better. But there's no reason that all this knowledge and insight has to be like reserved for a select group of people. So I appreciate all that you and Glenda are doing to, to help women. And I'm excited to be a small part of it. Can you please let all of our listeners know how they can find you? Sure. On Instagram, my personal account is just at Carrie C. That's C-A-R-R-I-E-C. -E um, and then for Curate Capital, it's at Curate.Capital. And that's also our website, Curate.Capital. There you guys have it. Thank you so much, Carrie. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure you are subscribed to my YouTube channel and follow Real Estate Happenings on Spotify so you never miss an episode.